Hey friends, Fargo here, and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to Content Facts, the series that goes into all the stuff I've learned about putting together and making content packs. Today, I'll be showing you how to properly organize your files, as well as how to repack your content pack files for testing. Last time, I showed you how to extract the Toontown phase files and where to put them. If you haven't seen that video, I recommend you do so before watching this one. If you already know how to extract the phase files, however, you're in the right place. Now, this topic will usually vary from person to person, because, well, everyone has their own way of keeping order, but there's a few tips you should keep in mind when organizing your phase files. First things first, it's good to keep your content pack phase files in a place where you can remember them, or at least have easy access to them. For example, I keep my content pack phase files in a little folder inside the TTR folder. I also have one in the Corporate Clash folder, but just because I plan to port my content pack over to Corporate Clash when I finish. The reason why I call it Toon Shredder is a whole other story though. Let me know if you remember Toon Shredder in the comments down below, or even know what I'm talking about. For the video's example, however, I'll be putting our content pack folder right here on the desktop. Once you've created a folder and placed it in a good spot, you can name it My Content Pack, or you can just name it after your own content pack. For example, Jimmy's Cool Content Pack. I'd also like to make sure to pin this folder to your file explorer, just in case. If you put the folder on your desktop, this isn't really necessary. However, if you don't have your content pack folder pinned, then it might be a good idea to do so anyway for the sake of easy access. Now that we have our main folder, you can go ahead and make a second folder inside the first. You can go ahead and title this workspace. This is the folder where you'll be keeping your work in progress content pack. Then go ahead and make a second folder to go alongside it. You can go ahead and title this one archive. This is where you can keep older versions of your content pack files for future reference, because more oftentimes than not, you'll want to reference an old asset for some reason or another. The third and final folder I'd recommend you having is a vanilla folder. This is where you can keep extracted base game files so you can pull from them later and edit them for your workspace folder. All right, now we have an organized content pack folder. We have our workspace so we can edit assets and organize our phase files so we can pack them for later. And we have an archive for past releases and pulling from past releases. And we also have a vanilla folder so we can pull from there and edit them as we choose. But now that we have our content pack folders set up, it's time to actually fill them with folders and populate them. As mentioned before, we'll want the base game phase files to put in our vanilla folder. So go ahead and take the phase files you extracted from last video and place them inside the vanilla folder. In theory, these files should never change, but if there's ever an update to the Toontown server you're working in, it's recommended to re-extract the vanilla files from time to time to replace the old ones. Next up, we'll need to populate our workspace. What we need to do for this is basically make new folders and name them after the phase files. Now you only need to make phase files that you'll be working in. So for example, if you're planning on only editing maybe the coghead textures, or the cog suits and maybe the Toontown map or some clothing accessories, you'd only need to make phase 3.5 and phase 4 folders in here. So we'll go ahead and do that right now. Also, if you're making textures, then you'll need to make maps folders in each, since the maps folder is where textures are stored in the actual phase files. You'll also need to do this for any audio you're doing, so if there's an audio folder that you need to add first, like this, then you'll have to put all your audio in there or if it's a models thing, which is probably not something you'll need. Uh, but here we're going to be putting maps, and then we're going to put maps in the other one. And there we go. Once you set up these empty folders in the workspace folder, you can get to content pack creation. Make sure to remember though, if you make a texture, soundbite, or UI element for a content pack, it's important to name an asset after the one you're trying to replace. If you don't rename the asset to its replacement, then it won't show up in-game when you package your workspace face files and place them in the game's resources folder. Also, if you're editing files from your vanilla or archive folders, remember to save the edited version into your workspace to avoid accidentally overriding the original file. This has caused me much grief in the past, so <laughs> it's best to try and avoid these mistakes when making your content pack. And there you have it, a very simple and easy way to organize your content pack into three folders and how to simplify your workflow for the future. Now it's time to talk about repackaging and testing your content pack. 
Alright, let's say you have a set of assets ready to test, and you want to repackage everything in your workspace folder. How do we do it? Well, it's not too dissimilar from how we unpackaged everything before. We even sort of use the same command. Let's go ahead and open up the command prompt like we did before, and input our workspace file directory just like I showed you. We'll want to use the multiply command. However, instead of typing x and minus f, we'll want to type minus c and minus f. What this does to the command is essentially reverse the effects, so instead of unpacking, it will repack the files. So with this information in hand, we can go ahead and type out the command once you've navigated to the workspace folder via command prompt. Just like this. In the past, it was kosher to repack each individual phase folder and drop them into your resources folder afterwards. The way you can do this is just like how we unpacked before, but that method is fairly tedious to do every time you want to make a change. Nowadays, the method is a lot more streamlined and modern, and it's the one I want to show you today. Not only is this method a lot less tedious, but it helps keep everything very well organized too. So after the multiply command, instead of typing each individual phase file one by one, we can go ahead and type the name of the multi-file we want all these phase folders to be contained into first. What this does is essentially creates a multi-file that all the phase files will be packed into, and negates a lot of the hassle of unpacking. For example, I'm going to be using the multi-file name jimmy.mf, since this is Jimmy's cool content pack after all. Now that we have a multi-file name, we can add a space and type out all the phase files from workspace that we want to package. For this example, I'm only packing phase 3.5 and phase 4 because that's the ones we made, but you can pack all of them at once if you really want to. After you type out the phase files, go ahead and press enter. After this, you should find a neatly packed multi-file in your workspace. Here it is. Once it's packed into the multi-file, you can take your jimmy and place them into the Toontown resources folder we made in the previous video. Once it's there, you should find that when you load into Toontown, your changes should be in place. You'll have to do this every time you make a change, so I would recommend writing down the command somewhere so you can memorize it for future unpacking and repacking. And now you know! I hope this was helpful in some way. If you have any questions or concerns, let me know in the comments. If you liked the video, please leave a like, and if you didn't, please leave a dislike so I know the dislike button still does something. Make sure to subscribe to join the Hypno Party, and I've been Fargo, and stay hypnotized, folks. Man, the new Batman movie looks great. I, I, yes, I, 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 you know, I'm so excited to see this movie because I mean, look, look at this new protagonist. Such a bold decision to to, to 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 move to move into New Direction and add ducks to the to the cast. How do you so wait, how do you how do you get Batman from this? This is a white sweater. Uh, Batman is being a bit more wholesome because you know he's a duck now. By and, 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 but, yes, you know, nice oh, yeah, white to be nice and visible okay, okay, in the okay, night. Okay. Like, that yeah. way he won't get hit by cars. And he's gonna fight crime while also looking out for getting hit by cars. Theater. I ha I know what what's in Batman. Okay. A movie, oh, movie sure. in a movie that doesn't give you expertise over all movies. Name five yeah, movies right now. Camera. Name five movies. Right now in theaters? I can do that, yes. alright? Alright, you have Batman, you have uh, Morbius. Yes, it's actually still in theaters. Um, You have uh, Morbius 2. Uh, you have... Um, uh, uh, that doesn't sound real. I don't believe that, you. It, it is real, okay?